on tonight's show, we have filmmaker and cinematographer, Teddy Bando. And now, for your host, Cool Paul. Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Cool Car. Welcome to the Kicking It With Cool Car Show. This is episode 226. Thank you guys for tuning in every week. Kicking It With Your Boy. You know where I'm at every Tuesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here kicking it with someone cool like I always have. I always have some cool guests come on here, man, just sharing their story, their dreams, goals, aspirations, all that in the, in the above. You know, we just make it a hu humanized conversation. We make it a transparent conversation. Uh, we pray all that. All right, so <laughs> you know what it is when you come on here. I'm just wanting to bring you value, doing my part in the ecosystem, providing for you. It's not about me. It's all about you. Do it for you. Can't do it without you. Say that all the time, and I mean it. All right, once again, we are here to provide you value. I have a great guest coming on my show tonight. It goes by the name of Teddy Van Gogh. He is a filmmaker, producer, director, cinematographer. Brother is everything. He does a lot. We're going to talk about it all. He has a new movie on Tubi streaming right now. I think he has a number two. I don't know if I'm jumping the gun, but I'm going to say it anyway. I think he has a number two, part two coming out as well. Uh, but yeah, we're going to just celebrate this man, celebrate all that he's doing, all the glory that he's bringing to everybody. Um, yeah, we're going to jump into it, man. Teddy Van Gogh, let's get it, y'all, without further ado. Teddy, Teddy, my brother, welcome What's to up, the show. Bro? What's up, brother? How are you? Thank you for having me, man. Oh, man. Thank you for being on the show, brother. I'm blessed, highly favorite. Thankful for you being on here. Uh, happy to see you. I know we went back and forth trying to get it all together. We finally got it. Oh, I but know, yeah. bro. Everything happens when it's supposed to happen, bro. I'm Absolutely. grateful that it happened. Absolutely. I know you're a busy man, brother. You, man, you got so many trades. I mean, you know, I. I can't blame you, right? A busy man. It's a good thing, though. That's a blessing. I appreciate the understanding, brother. Yes, absolutely. Hey, now listen. I do pray before every conversation. I know everybody's faith is not the same. I have to ask, are you okay with that? Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. Let's get it. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just thank you for joining us today. We thank you for just allowing us to come on this platform and just have an eloquent conversation and celebrate a man's life and his dreams, his aspirations, his goals. In this profession lord jesus we just thank you for that we thank you for all that you do for us all that you have done all that you are giving heavenly father lord jesus we just thank you for the little things that we may overlook at times lord jesus we just pray and ask that you just guide our steps honor let us honor you heavenly father lord jesus and all that we do in all of our steps and all of our words heavenly father lord jesus just allow us to honor our families heavenly father lord jesus and our crafts lord jesus we just pray and ask you to continue blessing us loving us guiding us lifting us up shining a light down on us we just give you all the victory all the glory all the love all the praise in your name we pray amen beautiful brother thank you my beautiful. brother thank you my brother yes, so, gotta give it up man gotta give it up so i mean you yeah. just told me you just came off your fast oh, ramadan man look, yeah. what, 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 that experience you said that was your first one right this was my first ramadan yes sir okay what was that experience like let's jump into that man so i got to a place in my life where i needed i felt like i had everything that you know, a man could possibly want besides a foundation. And I felt like what was rickety in my foundation was my spirituality. Okay. So it's like all the material stuff, like it is what it is, but like my foundation, I felt like was rickety. So I, start, I started to search out um, some kind of spiritual balance. And where I came across was Islam and that allowed me the knowledge to find and really dig into myself. And this time around, I decided that, hey, you know, it was it was really time for me to step into a full force. And I did Ramadan and 
I tell you, it was like the most insightful experience that I've ever had. Like I was really forced to bow down, pray, dig into myself, really, you know, stick to what I started and, you know, to really just find a deeper level of myself. So okay. it was an amazing experience. And I have, I got plus I lost 40 pounds. I lost 40 pounds. So I'm, I'm ready to go now. <laughs> <laughs> New and improved and charged oh, up. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. I'm happy for you, though, honestly. And, and so I got a question, though. I got a question. So my faith is Christianity, right? Um, yes, I come sir. from a Baptist background, but I'm more spiritual now. You know, when I was a child, I was, yes, I was raised Baptist and all that. But now it's not really yes, about sir. religion. It's about spirituality for me, you know? Um, yes, sir. I just got a personal relationship with God. I do go to church for my children. I'll, I'll say that, a non-denominational church. I go to church so my kids can get that foundation and they can do what they do with it, right? And let God have his way yes, with sir. it. Um, yes, but for sir. me, it's more spirituality. Uh, I was brought up Christianity. So for you, were you ever, you know, like, were you raised, like, in Christianity? And then how was it Born for you? Born and raised in the Baptist church. Okay. Born and raised in the Baptist church. <laughs> what, so, side, what side of academy were you? Okay, so with that said... Yes, how was it for yes, you or what what was it for you what was the switch that said you know what let me seek muslim let me seek well i got lost so i was raised in the baptist church like my aunt i'm talking about tuesday wednesday friday sunday we were in church um the, the junior deacons board i was a part of that i was a usher i was you know sunday both sessions i was in there as a child Okay. And um, as I got older, I kind of started to get away from it. And to be honest with you, just lack of guidance was the reason for me kind of getting away from it. So when I got a little, when I got mid twenties, I decided that I wanted to try to go back. Actually, probably like 23, 24. So yeah, mid twenties, I decided that I wanted to try to go back. And I had terrible experiences with the past that I kept coming across. So I just ran away from religion altogether. Okay. Um, as I'm pretty sure a lot of people's um, experience was. So I ran away from it completely and I just got off on my own and I'm 37 now. So I'm looking at my sons, I'm looking at my daughters and I'm really taking account on the men that I want my daughters to be around or to, 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 to grow, to marry one day. And I'm looking at the men that I want my sons to be. And yeah, like I said, like you can experience success, but if you're not the best man that you can be, how can I teach my kids what kind of man they should be with and what kind of man they should be? So personally for me, it was like, okay, well, what kind of man am I displaying to them? So right. that forced me to take account of the man that I was. Um, it, was a, it was a really, really um, difficult conversation to have with my wife. Extremely supportive through everything that I've gone through over the last five years that we've been together, married four years now. Um, constantly cheering me on, constantly pushing me forward. And we just got to the place where I said, babe, you know, I feel like this is this is what's calling to me. So I want to take this journey. And she said, hey, you want to do it? Let's do it. Okay. Yeah, man. Yes, sir. I love it. I love it. I love it. So did, yes, so it's like, the, like the Muslim faith, did that speak, did, did that kind of jump out at you as like a model of what you were seeking for? you know the, the it did. So, your family it did so you know obviously it's you know no pork it's the, it's the structure that i would that i felt like i was always missing i always have missed structure so when me and my wife first met one the value that she provided to me was the structure like i had you know i'm ready to run through brick walls i'm ready to you know get after it i got ideas i got this that, another but I, I operated in chaos so she provided me structures so that was her always her value to me she provided me an avenue to balance out, to get organized, to be structured. Right. So when it came to me trying to figure out what was missing and what was out of place in my spiritual life, I realized it was just all over the place and I didn't know which way to go. So Islam for me provided a form of structure that I can relate to personally. So being disciplined, being a man of your word, being you know, upright, being, you know, straightforward. Like I kind of resonated with that. That resonated with me. So that's the path that I chose to take. Got you. Got you. Now, nah, man, yeah, I, sure. I, I, I wholeheartedly understand that. And, uh, I, I, sure. hey, man, I'm proud of you, like for real. And I you know, your first you, Ramadan, man, congratulations, brother. You know what I'm saying? Like you Thank dove you, in, you took to it. 
and and, and you got through yes, it and um yeah and now it's only up and like you said it's the representation that you want for your life your your family your children your wife like yeah go for it yeah. man i'm all for it like i said like right like right now in life where i'm at like i'm big on legacy so i'm always looking at the relationships and the impact that I have on people when I'm gone. Like, I know I'm not gonna be here forever. I'm okay with that. I've come to grips with the reality yeah. of, I mean, I'm not gonna live forever, forever, but my legacy needs to. So how I treat people, how I interact with people, the man that people remember me for is what's most important to me. So what has to be even more important to me than, than how I interact and, and, and I remember by the strangers that I come across is how I remember by my own flesh and blood. And my wife as well so that is where i feel like i had to do the most work for them so absolutely yes sir that was a big part of my motivation man absolutely and i just have to stop and say ladies and gentlemen please excuse the grainy uh visuals here because we i don't know what's going on tonight we've checked our internet connection we checked everything we restarted everything and it's just not coming through the way we would like it to come through but we're pushing through uh, so just bear with us but the audio is very good. So we can hear you, brother. My apologies. I don't know what's yes, going sir. on. Uh <laughs> yeah, that's, why we, that's why we pay the big bucks for the audio guy. <laughs> I always make sure my audio is tight, baby. <laughs> Gotta make sure the audio tight. Gotta be heard. At least be heard, Gotta right? Make sure the audio tight. <laughs> I ain't doing pretty no way, so you ain't got to see me. As long as you can hear me good, then we good. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I appreciate you sticking through with me, man. Uh, I just, yeah, I don't know what's going on. It's one of them nights nice technology, I'll tell you. Uh, but yeah, brother, so let's take it back, though. So you're from, De are, you, are you from Detroit? I know you live in Detroit, right? Okay, so you're from Detroit. Born and raised in Detroit. The only time I left is when I went off to college. Okay, got you, got you. So... All of this movie stuff, man, cinematography, line producer, produ and I want to talk about all those roles, too. A lot of people don't even know what a line producer is. We're going to talk about that. Uh, how did you get into that? Like, where did it start? You didn't you didn't start there. So what were your first interests, your first love? You know, how did you end up here? So I'll go back a little bit further. So I was into stage plays when I was in middle school coming up. Okay. When I got to eighth grade um, in Detroit, it's a local news station, Channel 4, where they did a news report on me because I had these big old feet. So back in, in middle school, I wore a size 18. So my mom couldn't Damn. afford to buy me the shoes. Yeah, it, it was wild, bro. So, yeah, so my mom couldn't afford the shoes that I needed to go and do the stage play. So she got in, in contact with, at the time, it was called Sibley Shoes. I don't know what it's called now. Okay. And Sibley's donated me some shoes so that way I could be heralded in the stage play Cinderella. But fast forward past that, I ended up getting into football, getting away from the stage plays. So I ended up going to a school where I can actually play football as opposed to a performing arts school. So okay. I got away from that world. Uh, fast forward a little bit further to my 20s, I ended up going to cosmetology school because I needed to find a way. I, I used to do nightclub security and I got tired of getting shot at, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you, it was man, rough. I got man. tired of fighting every night. I got tired of getting maced, all of that. You That's know what I mean? It, and, and I was in it when that, I don't know how it is where you are. Cause where, cause, cause where are you at? What, what, what state are you in? I'm in Atlanta now, but if, I don't know how many years, but I've been all over. So I live in New York, I live in LA, I live everywhere. So what, what year was this? So I did a little bit of work out in New York. So, I, so it's a little bit comparable. So I was in the space, this was back in, so I came out of high school 05. So this had to be oh between 07 and 11. So I was in that window right before it started to get really, really bad where you can actually put somebody out the club and not have to worry about them coming back and shooting up the spot. Right. So I was on the way out at that point in time and they were starting to come back and shooting up the spot. I'm like, yeah, this can't, I can't do this no more. So 2010, I, I enrolled in cosmetology school um, because I got tired of getting the shot at. And I began my cosmetology career. So I came out and I started doing doing women's hair, but I took more of a liking to cutting hair. So I've been a barber for the last 14 years. Okay. Um, in 2018, it was a lady named Renika McQueen who used to come up to the salon that I used to work at. And she was a producer in the city. And I said, Queen, you should put me in a movie or let me do something in a movie. I can stand there and do somebody hair and make it look good. You know what I mean? I, I ain't got to say no lines to put me in a movie. So <laughs> right. she was shooting camera. I'm not gonna say shoo me off, but she didn't really take me serious like I wasn't serious. I wouldn't have took me serious at that point in my life either. I'm not gonna lie to you. I wouldn't do some BS. 
So after the pandemic came, she gave me a real opportunity. She said, hey, if you're still serious, then I got you. So she put me in a line in a, in a movie called A Family Divided, which is uh, her second project. And I've been bit with the bug ever since then. So since then, I've gone back to film school, went and got my degree. Okay. I have line produced, produced, directed. Um, I took a real liking to cinematography. I've studied extensively, traveled doing cinematography, everything. So um, I really dug my sick, sucked my teeth in to really harness my craft to this point. And I've been given a lot of opportunities because of so. Okay. All right. Yes, now, now you said, okay, like I said earlier, I said I was going to ask you a couple of things. Line producer, mm -hmm. explain what that is. A lot of people don't even know what that is. <laughs> You're right. A lot of people don't really know what the line producer is. <laughs> <laughs> no shots. <laughs> but a lot of people don't know what the line producer is. So I got you thrown into... I got thrown into the pits of hell and with gasoline draws on and told not to burn. My first time as a line producer, right? It was on a movie called Wake and I was responsible for the finances. So I had to make sure everybody got paid. I had to make sure that everybody's contract was in order. I had to make sure that I communicated with SAG because it was a union project. So I was the one that had to hold everything together. So the line producer is pretty much the glue of everything, mainly in charge of the budgeting. So if anything goes, if it goes a dollar over budget, that's your behind. That's pretty much in a nutshell. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. so a lot of a, a lot of times, um, especially when it comes to the independent world, um, it's not so much a budget for that. Um, so the line producer can double as the production manager as well, or any uh, anybody else on set. You know, sometimes it's director because I, I since I'm so used to being a line producer and managing the budget, I mainly do my own budgets myself, and I'll have somebody just come in and just make sure that the contracts are done. That part of it is taken care of. Okay. So when did yeah. you decide that you wanted to pick up that camera and start filming and directing and, and you know what I mean? When did, when did that come into play? I took a liking to the camera because in, in 2020, when the, uh, the pandemic hit, everything shut down. So with me being a, a barber at the time, I was forced to sit on my butt and try to figure life out. And, you know, boredom strikes. And a lot of us found new skills in that time. So I purchased my first camera during that window and I just started shooting everything I could. Um, but that still didn't really spark like the video side of it. That was more still photography because I went to the Photography Institute also during that time because I, I said I like still photography. Um, the cinematography aspect came into play when I first stepped foot on set with Kamal Smith. And I was actually able to actually, no, I lied to the back. I go back. So I was in season two of BMF and that's when cinematography really kind of, you know, infiltrated my, 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 my DNA. And I was actually able to see how they moved and how they orchestrated everything and how they got their shots and the purpose for their shots and the purpose for their lighting and how they lit everything and you know the the the, the techniques and everything that they they use they were really really helpful and gave me a lot of game and a lot of information when I was on that set so that that's the set that really changed my life okay and and corruption is that your first film that you directed wrote produced yes yeah. that's your baby yes. And That's I have my to say, first it, it's a good, it's a good film, man. I'm, I'm in the middle of it right now. When I was setting up the studio, I was watching it. And I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. I appreciate, it. yeah, I appreciate you, man. Yeah, that was, that was my baby. So, so that was actually my thesis script in cosmetology school. Oh, and I said wow. I wanted, to, wanted to be my first feature film when I came out. So my reward to myself was using that money to pay off. College. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. That is dope, man. Do you have any like? Okay, so you you know you got like um Scorsese, people like that, uh, Spike Lee that do like little quirky things, kind of like their signature. Do you have anything that you do? You know, that, that um, your work. I I like dark tones. So like the Dark Knight, like the way that the cinematographer and the director uses those really dark tones. Like if you can see the back, like my back, cause I was actually just talking to someone about it. like, everything is like this dark black, you know, base to it. And I feel like that's going to become more of my signature because even the project that we just finished, which is called Silent Screen, which will be premiering June 8th. So if you're in Michigan, please come on. I'm gonna have a ticket waiting for you at the booth. Um, and that has that similar tone, that similar feel to it, um, that really moody kind of vibe. Okay. You know, that's going to be my signature. 
Got you. Got you. Yeah. Now, you say, okay, so that's going to be your signature. Now, what about, um, what was I going to ask you? Um, God, it's slipping my mind. I'm sorry. That's all good. For you. <laughs> it's all right, baby. It's all good. It's all right. So, oh, so sing- all right, so let's ask you this. Teddy Van Gogh, what, what's behind the name, man? So the name was a joke. <laughs> The name was a joke at first. So my ex girlfriend at the time, she's like, my, it was me, my it was me, my ex girlfriend, and my partner, my close partner. He, we were sitting there just kind of talking, drinking, just just messing around or whatever. And she was like, yeah, he's like my big old teddy bear. So he's like, oh, you big teddy bear, and blah blah blah, and another. And he was like, man, you know what? Later on, conversation that same night, he was like, man, you know what? You have been kind of like being real creative, like a Vincent Van Gogh, but I'm gonna start calling you like Teddy Van Gogh. <laughs> And I was like, it's got a little ring to it. So I put it out and I'm telling when I tell you, like it caught, like that's who people started identifying me as. And I was like, well, I can't change it now. Right. <laughs> you know, and, and it's, and it's traveled with me along across every, you know, meeting that I, I've kind of touched, whether it be from CPL instructor to, 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 uh, film, the film world, to the hair world, like everywhere I go. Um, those people that know the name and, um, cause a lot, a lot, for the longest time I wouldn't do like, the podcast i wouldn't do like the social media stuff like that um i'm not afraid to be seen i just didn't like it that was never yeah. like a comfortable space for me no, I feel um, you on so that. People, people would know the name but they would know the face so now i'm starting to really take a uh the initiative to put the face to the name and yeah it's just been it's it's developed a, it's its own legs man it's yeah. been a beautiful experience for sure for sure i like yeah, your, yeah. Your, um, your instagram handle too legend of teddy <laughs> i appreciate you brother Appreciate yeah, I like you, baby. That. I like that. Thank you. <laughs> so Thank you. I appreciate you. Um. Okay. So I think we kind of jumped over something because you won a Telly Award. Am I correct? I did. For for I did. like a documentary or a film that you did? No, it was a Christmas movie. It's a Christmas movie. Okay. Christmas, Christmas movie. So it was a movie uh, called Cupid's Christmas that we did as a charitable. Um. So we we did the project uh, for a charity in Holly, Michigan. Okay. And we ended up winning a Telly Award for that project. It was a beautiful project. We sold it to Apple TV. It went. We sold it, to, and we also sold it to Hallmark as well. So that was like my first exposure to how that part of the the, the game works. Like being able to sit in these meetings with Hallmark and being able to sit in these meetings with and on these conversations with Apple TV and seeing how they talk, understanding you know, learning some of the lingo and how things right. are run. Like that was my my one of my earlier experiences out which i was very very fortunate to get on that project for sure that's dope and what was your role in that project co-producer producer okay got you, got yeah. you. Yeah. say the name again co-producer i was a co-producer next cupid's christmas cupid's christmas yeah cupid's christmas Man, I think yes I'm sir right. well i haven't seen the movie but i think i've seen that title and it's on it's it, on apple tv it's on apple tv yeah I'm it's on apple tv I'm at least feel free Please do, I'm please good. do. Let me let me write that down. Yes, keep it, keep yes it. sir. Yes, sir. And I and, and that was one of those projects. Also, like they gave me the ability to uh, cross over audience as well. You know, cross over barriers. Um, I don't want to be known as a person because in my daily life period, I'm not known as a person who just stays stagnant, who just stays in one lane and just one runs one race. So that project in this business in this world gave me an opportunity to kind of cross over and experience what different um, markets are looking for, what different markets are craving. So that was a really, really good experience for me. No, I bet, I bet, man. Yeah. Do you ever have? Uh, do you have a desire to ever own like a film studio? Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. That's in the works right now. Shh. Shh. Okay, got you, got you, got you. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, we don't, don't talk about, don't talk about it. put it out there yet. Don't put it. Twenty twenty four is going to be a great year. Okay, <laughs> that's right. the best I can say right now. Well, set this up. Yeah. I got a clip from Corruption. Set set the movie yes, up. Tell us a little bit about it, uh, and then so, I'm going to play the clip. I got a clip, and I'll, I'll tell you the clip that I have. I have the, the the clip early on in the movie when the DA goes in to speak to the corrupt mayor, so on and so forth. All right, so I want to so, play. It. So go ahead and set it up for us. So the movie itself is about in, in, in this in this broadest form is about a man dealing with the reality of his worst um, fear come to life when he has to, you know, goes through this thing where he loses his daughter and 
I really wanted to tell that story because I I woke up one day and I said, well, what is the what's what would be my reaction to the worst thing that could possibly happen to me? My kids are near and dear to me, or my world. What would be my reaction? How would I feel? How would I go about life in a situation where the worst, most unthinkable thing happens to me? Right. And I like law and order, so I put the, you know, I, you know, and I plus I live in Detroit, and there's nothing but, you know, politicians here, so you know. <laughs> yeah, man. I had a lot to pull from. Man, y'all had a lot going on. No, and there was those politicians out there, man. <laughs> I had a lot to pull from. I had a lot of, and you know what's so crazy? So, um, that is a that is a genre that I really do like. Um, that that drama. But that that law based drama, I really like that space, and I've been really, really fortunate to have a lot of on the job experience. So when I say that to say, like I've been I've been welcomed and invited into trials, so that way I can see how they actually run. Okay. Um, I've been I've I've talked to district attorneys who've actually let me come in and talk to when it was when when they could let me come in and actually shadow them. I've brought out with police officers and really gotten the knowledge on seeing how they operate the day to day, you know, and everything like that. So judges have let me come in and actually into their chambers and actually see how things actually run. Obviously I can't say any names, but um, that courtroom was a real life courtroom that um, uh, that district let me come in and film. And we, they gave it to us for absolutely for free just because they believed in me and what I was trying to do. Wow. So it's like all the opportunities that we've been afforded, and it's just been a blessing, man. I tell you, man, you really out there in the field, though, being a student. Yes, sir. Like that's yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah. As a writer, I feel like I have to be like I'll be I'll be doing you a disservice as a viewer if I didn't do my research and my background on how things actually ran and try to make them as realistic as possible. Because yeah, it's a movie, but at the same time, it's my opportunity to take you out of whatever world you're in and put you into my world that I've created temporarily. So I will be doing you a huge disservice if I didn't do my due diligence. Right. Absolutely. All right. Yes, we're going to jump into this clip so we can tell, show the world your work. And then I'll yes, come back a little bit and talk about it. Talk about some of the actors and actresses in it too. All right. Yes, sir. All right, guys, this is corruption. Let's go. The fundraiser was amazing and the centerpieces. Actually, I, I've got to let you go. Bye-bye. Good afternoon, sir. Hi. Good afternoon. I'm a district attorney. I know who you are, District Attorney Colbert, and the mayor isn't expecting you today. Oh, that's good. I said not today. Oh, uh, come on. Your eyes are very amazing. That doesn't matter. I... He doesn't have appointments. He is back to back, and oh. I don't need you in my space right now. Oh. So call and make an appointment. Feisty. I love it. I'll give you a gift on the way out, too. Thank you. Yeah, District Attorney Colbert's on his way back. I tried to stop him. Just a heads up. Okay, thanks. Look, I don't care what you got to do or who you got to fucking speak to. Just go get it done. Excuse me. Listen, William. William. Wait, listen to me. I pay you a lot of fucking money for results, not excuses. Okay? So call me back when you have something worth the fucking money I waste on your ass. Motherfucker. Excuse me, Mayor Brand. District Attorney Melvin Colbert is on his way to see you. We're not taking any unscheduled meetings today, Tracy, okay? Okay. Thank you, Tracy. Come to bed, huh? Matter of fact, you did. You see, my attorney, Mr. Harrison, he won't be with us today, so I'll have Charlene schedule you a meeting appropriately. Ah, uh, well, I'm sure you can imagine that I'm extremely busy, so maybe he can meet up with us at... As a matter of fact, he cannot, okay? Besides, I have a community action meeting coming soon, so do me a favor, mm -hmm. go down and schedule an appointment with Charlene. I'm sure you can answer a few questions. And I'm sure you learned about right to counsel, am I correct, Mr. DA? That is correct, so I guess it is best that your counsel's present, you're right. All right, um, so I'll just go make an appointment with uh, Charlene. Charlene. Feisty. Yeah. Charlene at the front, right? It's the only secretary on my floor. All right, oh, and the city of Detroit, we the people, we appreciate your service so much. Good day, Mayor.
That was a good scene, man. That was a good scene. It's Appreciate a good scene, brother. I'm telling you, I, I was locked in, and I had to, I had to cut it off for a second, but I'm gonna finish it because I got to save it on my on my list on Tubi. Uh, I appreciate never, you. Yeah, 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 man. So tell us a little bit about the actors, actresses in the movie. Shout out some names. Um, yeah. So those two actors, or those three actors in that uh, movie, um, is Emery who was our lead. That's Bill Swift, and I forget the young lady's name, but those three people were absolutely amazing to work with. Like Emery, like that became my guy, like Bill, um, our, our relationship flourished. Um, they gave me so many tips being a first time director, um, on how to be better, um, moving forward. They were so willing to work with me, to help me to, you know, like I said, educate me. They just wanted, they were rooting for me. They just wanted me to succeed with this project. Um, so I couldn't have asked for a better cast, a better crew, like a better support system throughout that progress, throughout that process and on that project. Dope. What, what were some of the some of the learning curves that you had to overcome with that being your oh, film? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I look at corruption now and a, corruption was a, is a great baseline for me so like with me like any conversation like you hear me talk about like these baselines me me establishing like my foundation like corruption for me was a phenomenal foundation as a starting point so that way i always have i believe in starting as high as you can possibly start and that way you can only go higher from there you know so i really put a lot of time i really put a lot of money i really put a lot of effort into doing the very best that i could I'm able now to look back and see where all I went, where every place I went wrong, like some of um, my shot selections, I wanted to be better, but it was still great for what it was. And it was still a piece that I'm going to always hold near and dear to me. But when we see these next projects and when you see corruption too, <laughs> yeah, you're going to see it grow. You're going to see that development. You're going to see that shift and you're going to see uh, me as a director, as a cinematographer, really fully spread my wings and become everything that I want to become behind the camera. Um, and like I said, I have a phenomenal cast and crew that's beside me throughout this whole process um, and are really, really rooting for us to win. Um, and yeah, man, it's, 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 it's beautiful, brother. It's, it's so beautiful. I can't, like, words can't express to you, like, how I feel about the support system that I have with these projects. Like it's, it's been unreal. Like it's really been unreal. Like I can't speak for anybody else's experiences, but my experience has been phenomenal and unreal. Bro. Like humbling, humbling, humbling. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I talk to Emory, I talk to Bill, like we have like regular conversations. I always see them out. Um, I always talk to Emory on the phone cause he's in LA, but I always see Bill out. And when I tell you like, it's humbling, man. Like it's humbling brother. Yeah, that has to be an amazing feeling, brother. You know, yeah, just, what? you know, yeah, what? concept to to what we're seeing here, like, and then, it, it took two, it took two years for us to write that project. Damn. It took two years for us to, it took two years for us to write that project, man. Two why, years to write that project. Why two years? Hmm? What was the process? Why two years? Because. Well, let me not say that. It wasn't two years to write the project. It was two years to figure out what we wanted to write and how we wanted to do it. It took maybe four months to actually write it because it was our first time actually writing okay. um, a full feature film. So we had to figure out, you know, structure. We had to, you know, how to really, you know, dial in our characters, how to figure out what we wanted to tell, when we wanted to tell it, and how to make this project cohesive. Um, so the whole process all together was two years from um, the inception of the idea to writing the project to actually delivering the project. So that's when I say two years. That's what I meant to say. So I forgive me for staying writing it for two years. Okay. Two yeah. things. Who are the writers? Who, who's we? Give them some light. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, absolutely, man. Jasmine, Jasmine Rivers, that's my baby. She, I couldn't have done that project without her because she, she held my hand through all that project and she listened to me when I tell you I was like, I, I, and some days I didn't know which way I wanted to go and I over talk sometimes too. So she was actually able to decipher through <laughs> all of my wordplay. It was like, 
And it, okay, this is what you really mean. Is Jasmine the one that gave you that shot? After the one that gave you the shot when you said you wanted to be in a movie, you were doing hair. Oh, no, no, no. Us, no, no. That, that is for, that's for, that's for Nika McQueen. Now, okay. I did meet Jasmine through Renika as well. So that's why I say, like, I can't express to you the, the amount of support that I've had throughout my career to this point. Yeah. It's been unreal. Like, if, if, like, people that say, like, oh, I made it by myself, I would be a fool to say that. <laughs> no one has made it. Be- you know what I mean, and I, and I, and and you you get that, and it's like yeah. the people that kind of say that I love them. Don't get me wrong, but I have a different experience, so I, I'm going to say, and I'm going to always get my flowers when I get a chance to, like, yo, know, like it's no Teddy Van Gogh without the people that support me and the people that keep pushing me and the people that keep tripping me and talking stuff and you know and keeping me encouraged and you know motivated. Like it's it's ain't no ain't no Teddy Van Gogh without all that. So. Now, I think the people that say that, you know, I, I did it myself or or I didn't need nobody is the ones that really didn't ask anybody for a favor or a hand up or a handout or anything like that. But along the way, somebody pushed them along. Somebody helped them. Somebody did something for them, but they didn't ask or, for it. I think that's the mentality of like, you know. Or I, even I not, that. not even so much asking for, like people don't, people don't realize how much the janitor plays a part in your success. Yeah. Like people disregard yeah. the janitor, man. Yeah. Like you don't know yeah. who's up late nights. You don't know. Like you have no idea who's yeah. talking about cool car yeah. right now who you would never meet. And just because you get one extra follower because somebody said cool car's name, and it's somebody that you may never meet. Like yeah. me and you are here right now based yeah. off of a conversation. I don't know what Lester told you about me. Exactly. But at the end of the day, yeah. Lester is the one that connected us. I didn't ask Lester to do that. Yep. Lester owed me nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. if anything, I owe Lester is something because just because of the way the situation played out, because Lester was supposed to be in corruption, but it's just it, it was a miscommunication on my part. And it's all love to Lester. And I apologize, you know, for that, you know, that miscommunication. But like, yo, like you don't know, like, not to call Lester the janitor, because that's not what I'm saying, but no, you no. don't know who's doing the work for you behind the scenes. Absolutely. That you, you will know, never get an opportunity to acknowledge. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know who's talking about Teddy Van Gogh right now. Right now. I don't know. I thank you though. I appreciate yeah. you though. And and I you know what happens. Yeah. You know what happens. Yeah. Right? Because you'll get you'll get a, a you know, you'll get a like on Instagram, you'll get a DM, you'll get yeah. somebody with a comment, Absolutely. you'll get another follower, and you'll be like, Okay, well, I see who they follow or who follows them, yeah. so I know they're attached to them. They must have said something Absolutely. or they saw you know what I mean? But yeah, we see it. You see it. That's why you know it's like you, you don't do this alone. You may not ask for anything, but trust and believe you you're not doing this alone. Absolutely, bro. We dis I, I say that all the time, but we disregard the janitors, bro. The janitors yep. are the most valuable people that we could come across. You treat the janitor right, you treat the people. what it what it uh I forgot who it was. Was it Robert Green? It was one of those guys. I forget whose quote it was, but you you judge a man based off of the people that he needs. That he, you judge a man based off of how he treats the people he doesn't need at the moment. Absolutely, that's real. That's so. You know real. what I mean? Yeah. Because you don't know. Because you don't know, man. Yep. You don't know who you need. Like I had an opp- like a guy came up here to my office, and he wasn't coming up here for me. I, the, the, the front desk guy is, is his partner. He just wasn't at the front desk at that time. I think he stepped up to the restroom. But I go and I answer the door for him. We just talking like, hey, it's, it's such and such here. I'm like, no, he might have stepped off for a second. So we we're just talking. He plugged me with the connection that may change my life. You know what I'm saying? Like he knew the right person it was connected to the right person that could possibly change my life. All because I went and opened the door. I'm talking about he looked like a bum. He you wouldn't you wouldn't think to talk to him. But I have the understanding of you treat everybody with respect you treat everybody you Absolutely. talk to people as they're humans and you never know how far you get in life yeah man message yeah message <laughs> real never know, you know what I mean? yeah, gotta treat yeah, everybody with respect but at the end of the day you, respect, man. you you know uh <laughs> beliefs whatever don't even have to align but just treat people with respect it's, it's all about how you treat people bro Absolutely. Firm believing. It's all about how you treat people. That comes back around on you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, man. So that goes back into what we talked about earlier legacy, man. Like, that's real for me. 
Like that is a legitimate thought of mine throughout the day, every day. Every time I meet somebody, you know what I'm saying? Like I want to leave a lasting impression on anybody who I come across in a positive way. I don't care if I never see them again. People always you know what I mean? Feel at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Nothing you know what I'm else. Saying? If they don't real. nothing else, they gonna remember that. For real, bro. For real, brother. Yeah. That is legit. That's it. That's that is it. legit, bro. You figure That's that it. out. You you, you kind of figure out life. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day. Simple, man. Those simple life is things. simple, man. Yeah, it's those simple things like that. Life is simple, man. Yeah. How you treat people and how you treat yourself is the key to life, in my opinion. How you treat people and how you treat yourself. But yep. you got to know how to treat yourself first. Yeah, oh, yeah. You got to have self-love. You got to have self-respect. You got to have self-worth. If you have those three things within yourself, you can give that all the rest of it to the world. You will have worldly love. You will have worldly respect. You will have world, you know what I'm saying? You will yeah. love the people that you come across and treat them with, you know, accordingly. It, hey, some people you got to stay away from, but I'm going to respect them, though. Just Absolutely. respect you from a distance, though. Absolutely. All of. You don't love yourself, you start to resent yourself, and then you lash out, and you, that yeah, you put, you put that. And on. then you project on the world. You project, project on. onto the world. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Have all this crazy. Yes, sir. man. I hope you got this recorded, baby, because you me be driving some gears <laughs> tonight, baby. <laughs> it, it's, it's definitely being recorded. It's, it's you know <laughs> and and the picture quality is actually good right now, so I'm glad. Here we, here we go. We figured yeah, it out. Right. You know what I'm saying? I can clip this one and go and slap you it on. Me. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 we got it together right in the nigga time, baby. Right, right, right. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, sure. Hey, let's talk about these certifications you have, brother. Like, come on, man. You like, you got your certified. What, hold on, I wrote this stuff down because. <laughs> Hold on, let me see. <laughs> certified muzzle loading mm-hmm. pistol instructor, certified in multiple weapon platforms such as handguns, rifles, cutlery. Brother, talk about that. And then you you whoop ass too. Like, come on, man. Talk I mean, talk to me. <laughs> you know, everything goes back to like the foundation, man. Everything's goes everything really goes back to um taking off the the the, the uh the hood. Everything goes back to like what my firm belief of a man is like, I'm supposed to protect, I'm supposed to provide. At the end of the day, my job is to protect my family and provide for my family on any level to any magnitude, you know, whatever needs to happen for my kids and my wife to be safe. I need to be able to do so in a legal professional manner. Right. So I do train myself. Um, I do train um, at a lot of the local gun ranges here. I do teach at some of the local gun ranges here. Um, I am a martial artist. I've been practicing martial arts for years. Um, for one, it helps me for my mental health also. But at the end of the day, like I don't believe in, and this is no, no diss to the police. I'm not one of those defund the police people. But I understand the responsibility of the police. Their job is to come and clean up on aisle three. They are not to come to protect me. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. my job is to protect my family first and allow them to come do their job, which is clean up the mess after. In a legal manner, of course. Yeah. But that's why that's kind of how it is, man. So everything I've done, everything that I, I have built, the man that I have built myself to be to this day is based off of what I feel like a man should be because I didn't have a father growing up. I had no no positive male role models in my life, really, outside of my high school football coach. Um, everyone else, all the other guys were kind of like stagnant in and out. Um, I did. I was a product of the OGs in the neighborhood telling me, "No, nah, bro, you got to get off the streets. Like, go to go to practice. You know, right. go do your homework." I was I was fortunate to be a product of that because yeah. it could have been the other way around. Um, but I was very very fortunate. I'm very very grateful for those one or two guys that were you know, knowledgeable or aware enough to be like, nah, bro, you got an opportunity. Like, you know, get to practice, bro. Like, there ain't no way in hell you're supposed to be around here. Right. Um, but everything that I know to be as a man with me not having, like, positive real role models was what I've built based off of what I've seen good men do and what I thought to be bad men do. And took notes and just kind of cut and pasted 
you know, myself together as a as a man to create myself now. Um, so that way, again, I, I'm looking at my boys and these are my boys and, you know, they want to be like their daddy. Who is their daddy? If, you know, their daddy ain't together mentally first, physically, which is another, you know, part of um, why I chose to go to the Islamic route and, 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 and take part in Ramadan and shit because it challenged me mentally, challenged me physically. Like it challenged me emotionally. It challenged me on so many different levels. And it's some things. So, and even as an example, what came up today, my son, I did Lent and Ramadan actually. Okay. So Lent started February 14th. It started February 14th. I started on February 13th. And what me and my family decided to do was give up cheese and sugar. I was like, well, you know, I'm going to give up meat as well. So my son was like, well, why would you give up meat? Like, that's not what we said we was going to do. I said, because son, I always have to be setting a bar high. Because if I don't set the standard at a certain level, then you will feel like this is okay. And no, this is okay. Going above and beyond. So whatever it is that you say you want to do, you take it a little bit further and keep pushing yourself to be that much better. And that's going to separate you from the pack. So, and it's paid off for me having that philosophy, traveling with that philosophy with me day to day. So it's worked so far. And it's been, it's allowed me to set a great example for my boys. So yeah, man. that's important. Definitely. That's important. And, and you said you lost 20 pounds? No, 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 no. I lost 40 pounds. You lost 40 So from pounds? February 13th, from February 13th to today, it was 40 pounds in total. Man, brother, that's amazing. How does Appreciate you, baby. How do you feel? Light on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> Light on my feet. <laughs> I'm ready to go bust a move right now. <laughs> <laughs> Light on my feet, baby. That's yeah, what's up. You man. feel like you have more energy? Yeah, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, much yeah. more energy, much more clarity much more poise, much more peace, man. Like I even I had to tell somebody today, like, yo, I'm at, I'm, this is the most peaceful place I've ever been in my life. And I refuse to go back to a pace of being uneasy. I refuse, man. After experiencing this, it's just like you, like you experience something good, man. It's like, I can't go back to that madness. Like now I know it exists and I know how to get to it as well. So it's like, I can never go back. I yeah. couldn't, man. So, so for yeah. Lent, you gave up cheese, sugar, and meat. And meat. Mm -hmm. Oh, and how the, long did the, it the, last? The, last? So Lent was February fourteenth until Easter, and then Ramadan was March tenth, which was so crazy. March eleventh to today, to April ninth. So okay. I did them both together, and it was it was an experience. It was so crazy because Side and Screen, which is my next project, we premiered in June June eighth. Um, we started filming March 10th. We filmed March 10th through March 16th, which is the first week of Ramadan. And when I tell you on day three, I almost died. Oh. Like I was like dehydrated because I hadn't done it. Yeah. I was preparing for it. But it's like when you, it's like a fight, man. Like when you, you can train all you want, but when you actually get into the fight, you got to actually figure out how to move correctly, how to actually, you got to study your opponent and figure out what they throwing at you. Yeah. When I tell you, they whoop me. <laughs> <laughs> whoop me like it was Terrence Crawford. I'm like, bro, like, chill. <laughs> so, day three almost got out of here, man. So, but it was so all good. We during Ramadan, you can't eat what? Anything? Or what? Are you, no. what do you? Sundown is no, no food, no water, no sex, no sexual acts. Um, and it's a couple other things as well, but those are the main three things that I focused on. So I told the wife, like, leave me alone. To the sun now. <laughs> no lunch times. No lunch specials today, baby. I'm on the mission. You thank me later. <laughs> and, and what are some of the things that you ate when, once the sun go down? Once the sun went down, so you're um, not shocking your system. So um, what I did, because I, I I've gone meatless before. I did meatless for two years at one point in time. Okay. So what I figured out what works for me is I can eat the exact same things I always eat. I would just take the meat out. So like tonight I had a burger, but it was a black bean burger. The other night my daughter cooked spaghetti, but she packs mine with veggies as opposed to meat. So everything I would usually eat, then I would just eat it without meat on it. So like if I do pan, if I do breakfast food, I just don't get no meat. It's usually 
pancakes or grits and eggs and i keep it simple with that even though eggs can you know you talk to some people it's chicken but at the same time it's not me so it is what it is i'm gonna rock with that Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It all depends on who you talk to about that situation. It all depends on who you convert to. You know what I'm saying? A little gray area. A little gray area. A little gray area. You know? You know? All right, cool. You know, cool, man, cool. I, try, I try to keep it simple, man. Just keep it so that way I'm not overthinking it. I'm not overdoing it. Keep it simple. I kiss everything. Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah. you know, try to. It's been it's been working for me. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you. I'm always happy for somebody who, who discovers something, you know, and like that works for them and, you know, leads yes, them down a, a better path, so to speak. You know what I mean? So, yes, shout out real quick. The movie, you said you got a new movie coming out June 8th. 8th. June yeah, 8th. We, will be, we will be premiering it June 8th. Um, if you're in Detroit, we will be premiering it June 8th at the Riviera in Farmington. That is called Silent Scream. That is that is a project for me for one that shows my growth as a director shows my growth as a cinematographer but really because i have this soft spot for like black women and i'm not I, i'm never going to take it as far as to say it's like i'm just this overly this this this, this super advocate but i have black daughters i have a black wife i have a black mom i have a black family yeah. And I really, really feel passionately about the impact that they have on the world and the impact that the world has on them. Right. So this project is one that a lady came to me and she said, hey, I battle with this throughout my life. Can you help me write a story about it? And that story was about her battle with drug addiction, abuse, being left out, being discarded, and figuring out a way to find her way back to God. And that for me was a very, very important story for me to tell because there's so many women, there's so many people, period, but there's so many women that are discarded, that are, you know, thrown away, that go through things and don't seem to know that it's a way back, that don't seem to know it's hope, that don't seem to know that they have a support system. So this project, was about showing women that, hey, you do have a way. This may not be the way for you, but you have a way. And if you need a way, if you need help, then don't be afraid to reach out to somebody because there's always somebody close enough to you that, that is willing to help you. It may only be one person, but all you need is one person. All you need is one. Yeah. You know? One person, one it's all shot, you need. One opportunity. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's real. So this project is one that I feel very, very proud about because I get to show my daughters like, hey, I don't care how far you may, whatever happens in your life, if you do make a mistake, it's okay. You yeah. can always clean yourself up, get your life back together, and regain control. And that is important for me to display, especially to my women. Absolutely. Kudos to you, brother. For real. Appreciate you, you baby. A good work, man. You're holding the family down. Representing, representing Appreciate us. The way we should be appreciate you too, you know what i'm saying and honoring the black woman so yeah and the family so yeah. man for real. yes sir blessing brother yes sir corruption two when can we expect that brother i haven't seen one fully but i'm gonna finish it and i'm looking for part two because i'm telling you it's good corruption two um is going to be 2025 we're going to get it we're going to get into production very soon it's going to be, we're going to take our time with product with corruption too. C2 is going to be, C2 is going to fill in all of the gaps of corruption one and create a, a vibe and experience that I, I don't feel like can be matched. So we're doing it right. When I say right, we're doing it right. Like I got called all my actors. I said, get your butt in shape. Cause you're going to be, yeah, get in shape. Be ready. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we taking it. We, we taking it there. We definitely the taking it. There. And corruption two gonna be like on Tubi, or you gonna stretch it, move more platforms. Yeah. So, so Silent Scream was created from the idea to production um, for Lifetime. So I'm hoping that Lifetime catches this, and you know, when we have that conversation to say, hey, yeah. We want you. We wanted you. We wrote this for you. 
So let's right. have a real conversation about how we can make that happen. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, you've been there before. They said it got to be some type of relationship. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. That's what's yeah. up. <laughs> That's what's up, brother. Sure. Listen, brother, man, I appreciate you coming on here, man. I, I wish you the best. I'll be praying for you, my brother. Appreciate keep being you. Keep being great. Keep being a great father, husband, brother. You know what I'm saying? Representation of what we what we need to be looking like and sounding like and you know what I mean and putting out to the thank world thank you sir yeah keep doing that everybody links are down below you keep an eye out silent scream June 8th corruption 2 on the way check out corruption right now on Tubi I'm telling you it's good I've started I think I'm maybe 15 20 minutes in and I'm hooked so I'm telling yes, sir. you there's some listen a lot of people give Tubi they give them a lot of grief, right? Like, eh, we got some crazy stuff on that. Mm -hmm. Some good stuff on Tubi, though. Tubi yes. is getting good. I'm meeting a lot of great producers and directors that are putting some good product out there on Tubi. And I've watched all of them. Anybody that comes on my show, I've watched your film. So anybody watching, just know I've watched your film. Teddy, I'm going to watch your film. I'm actually going to find that one on yeah. Apple TV, too, and watch that as well. I just like the support, man. I'm going to do what I say. You know what I mean? Put my eyes on it. Cause that's what that's the support that you need put your, put your eyes on it give, give them that stream so ladies and gentlemen i'm telling you if i'm telling you it's good i'm critical i'm telling you it's good go check it out i don't watch anything if i see yeah i'll be like All right, i gotta cut this off it's good <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes sir absolutely but links are down mm -hmm. below make sure you check it out before we get out of here i'm going to show the trailer of corruption as well i know i showed the clip and i'm gonna play the trailer uh but teddy man i appreciate you my brother coming on the show it's always a pleasure having brothers like yourself come on represent man and you know just drop them gems be a beacon of light for people um just providing value man that's what it's all about so thank you so much for uh joining me i do apologize for the i don't know the grainy stuff going on we troubleshoot we troubleshot troubleshot it is what it is we got the audio. We got some. We got some good spots in there. We got some clear spots. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Man. But I uh, appreciate you having me, brother. It's been an honor. It's been a privilege. It's been a blessing, man. You have no idea. I just thank you for allowing me to 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 share this platform with you tonight. No doubt. Hey, we got to run it back too. So maybe when Silent Scream comes out, <laughs> got to get you back on. We got to on clear. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying. I got to get you where it's not great. <laughs> yeah. I can get it right. I got to represent you right, man. It's only right. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate I, you. Know, but we're going to get it right. <laughs> I appreciate you, baby. My man. Yeah, for sure, man. But yeah, many blessings, my brother. Everybody, thank you for you tuning too. in. All right. Make sure you check out Teddy. Legend of underscore Teddy on Instagram. Go follow him. You know, watch his journey, man. Support his journey. That's what it's all about. You know what I mean? Support. We're supporting here. Um, I always support. So you see me on there. I'm a, I, if I see your post, that's just me. I'm liking it because I know what it means, mm -hmm. right? We're all business right. men, business women and, and, and men, right? I know what you want Instagram for. I'm going to like it. I'm going to comment, whatever. So I'm always support uh, when I see you, man. You know, the, the algorithm don't always show you. You know how that goes. But I'll mm -hmm. be there. I'll be there in the shadows, man. <laughs> You and me both. Much love, baby. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. You know where I'm at every Tuesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here, kicking it with someone cool like Teddy Van Gogh. Go and follow Teddy. Go stream Corruption. I'm going to finish that tonight. All right? Y'all do like me, man. Peace and love. Until next time, we are out of here. Don't go nowhere, though. I'm playing the trailer. Corruption. Y'all go watch it. We out of here. Peace. You got no control over this, right? So, to what do I owe pleasure of this little visit? All right, I'm a decorated man around here. Objection. Magnificent.
Good morning. I did call the number back. Baby, he took our fucking baby. Well, you better regain control.